This example will show us how to find the matrix of a linear transformation. And we're going to do it with a graphical illustration. So I have a little figure here, um, this whatever shape this is, little house. And uh, we are going to calculate a transformation that's going to send this point A to another location, and it's going to send the point B to another location. And we're going to figure out what linear transformation will do that, and then we'll figure out what happens to the other four points so that we can figure out what's the transformation that takes place on the entire figure. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by thinking about our points as vectors. So we're going to think of a vector for point A as this vector that has the coordinates. So in particular, uh, what I'm thinking of is I'm thinking of V as V sub A as that vector. And then we're going to have another vector B, uh, VB, which is going to be 2, 2. So let's write that down. And what we have is we have a linear transformation that takes our vector A and it's going to send it to a new location. And that new location is given by the new vector, 0, 2. And at the same time, our, our point B is sent to a new location, and that new location is 2, 1. And now we have all the basic information. I have uh, two vectors. These are linearly independent. We can see that. They'll span all of our two. And we know the image associated with each of those vectors in my basis. And I'm now interested, what is the overall linear transformation? What we'll do is we'll interpret this information in the language of a matrix. So I am going to start by thinking of these vectors, VA and VB, as a basis. So I have a basis for all of R2, and I have an image for each vector in that basis. And these vectors that we have coming out, we have them represented in their standard coordinates. So I have a second basis, my standard basis, which is our favorite natural basis. We have 1, 0, and 0, 1. And so this information that I have about the image of each of these vectors represented in the standard basis tells me that I know a matrix for T going from a basis alpha to a basis sigma where I take the first vector in my basis alpha and I get an image vector 0, 2. I take the second vector in my basis alpha and I find the coordinates in my other basis 2, 1. And so I have this matrix, but I want the standard matrix. And the standard matrix is the one where both bases are sigma. So what we want is we want the matrix associated with going from sigma to sigma. In other words, we want to know the images of E1 and E2. So the way we're going to think about this is we're going to think about what we want. We want to go from a basis sigma through the matrix or through the transformation T to the basis sigma. And what we have is we have a transformation. Let's do this in a, in a different color. We know the transformation from alpha to sigma. So this is what we know. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a transformation that goes from sigma to alpha, and we're going to do that with the identity matrix. Or not the identity matrix, the identity transformation. Okay, And so what we need is we need to know what is the transformation matrix going from sigma to alpha. So we're going to find that. There's a different transformation. This is the one that goes from alpha to sigma, and this is easy. And here's why it's easy. If I go and think about my vectors, 
I have a vector and I've represented it in my sigma basis. These are the coordinates in the sigma basis and these are the coordinates of my second vector. So the identity, mat the identity transformations matrix going from alpha to sigma is the matrix that puts the coordinates of the first vector which is 1, 2 in the first column and it puts the second vector coordinates in the second column 2, 2 and so that's easy and going in the other direction I use the inverse so the identity transformation going from sigma to alpha is the inverse of that matrix. So we could find that inverse matrix using either the um, augmented matrix with the identity or I could use the adjoint. Um, either way, um, I did that work and have a matrix for us. So this is equal to the matrix minus 1, 1, 1, minus a half. And what do these vectors mean? Well, what this is saying, this first column are the coordinates of the elementary matrix of the elementary standard basis with respect to alpha. And so what it says is my E1 is negative V1, VA I mean, plus the vector B. And the second column is telling me that the second standard basis vector is equal to VA minus a half VB. And if you think about those vectors, you should see that, that that's actually true. So now that I have that matrix, I can interpret uh, this transformation. So what we'll do is we're going to go from our standard basis to our alpha basis, from our alpha basis through the transformation to our image in the standard basis. And when I do this composition, I'll do the identity first, followed by our transformation. I work right to left. So what that means is my standard matrix is the identity going from sigma to alpha times the matrix for T going from alpha to sigma. Going from right, this is the first matrix that acts on my coordinates, and then I take my second matrix that acts on my coordinates in the alpha basis. So I can now write down my, my solution. I have my matrix T, which is 0, 2, 2, minus, or 2, 1. I'll multiply it by my change of basis matrix, negative 1, 1, 1, negative half, and this product corresponds to the composition of the, that chain of events. And so this gives me my matrix, and um, let me calculate that. Okay, so what do we have? Well, this is the matrix in the standard basis. So the first column is the image of the, of the vector 0, of 1, 0. So this vector 1, 0 gets sent to 2 minus 1. The second basis vector, 0, 1, is being sent to negative 1, 3 halves. And this matrix allows me to calculate all of the other images. All right, so let me uh, clear the screen. I'm going to keep this matrix, and we'll calculate what happens to all those other vectors. All right, so we have our standard matrix, which represents my standard basis. So this is what I can work with regular coordinates. And what I'm interested in is uh, what happened to these other four points. So let's see what happens first to um, this point here. So that happens to be the vector um, 0, 1. And so t of this vector 0, 1. Well, the cool thing about our matrix 
is that now that I have my standard matrix, 2 minus 1 minus 1, 3 halves, I get to just multiply by my coordinates and get the image. So minus 1, 3 halves. That is, in fact, my, my point, my new point. Okay, so I get sent, let's see if I can add that point now, minus 1 and 3 halves. So that's going to be somewhere around here. So that's that point. Um, all right, so let's see what's next. Uh, the next point would be the origin. This is going to turn out to be really easy. A linear transformation always sends 0, 0 to itself. Uh, that's because it's, if you took the vector 0, 0 and multiplied it by any matrix, it's always the 0 vector. It's the trivial null vector. So that didn't really take a lot of work. And so that goes back to the same point. Okay, great. Uh, let's see what's next. We've got our next point here at uh, 3, 0. So let's see where 3, 0 goes. 3, 0 is going to get sent to an image at t of 3, 0, which is going to be 3 times the first column. So 2, negative 1, negative 1, 3 halves times 3, 0. I get three copies of the first column. That's 6, negative 3. Might have trouble finding that on my point. Let's see if we can figure out where that would be. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So here's that point. All right. Um, and then my last point that I was interested in was here at 3, 1. So let's see, 3, 1 gets sent to an image that I get by taking 3 times the first column and 1 times the second column. which I actually can get as 5, negative 3 halves. So let's see, that would be 5, negative 3 halves. Looks like that would be about right there. So let's see what this image looks like. Um, let's do it in purple. Let's try to match that original color. So, I think that's pretty close. So this new shape, see this original rectangle got turned into this parallelogram, and the little trapezoid on top uh, turned into this other trapezoid on top. So that is the linear transformation that happened to my vector space. I've been sort of squashed in two different directions, and stretched out. And that is how I can use two vectors of a basis to figure out the entire linear transformation.